Welcome to What to Watch with me, Toby Earl, the show which loves that Raymond Briggs story, The Snowman. Although its wholesomeness has been tarnished for me after seeing a deleted scene from during filming where two of the snowmen got in a fight. Until this show is walking in the air, we'll speak to the most Christmassy stars off the most tinselly screen in the corner of the room or in your gold frankincense Mers. Coming up on the show today, John Malkovich boards the ABC Murders, the Agatha Christie thriller where a killer uses the railways to commit a series of killings. Poppy Lee Fryer and Will Tudor get their skates on to play Torval and Dean in a new biopic. Mark Gatiss and Anjali Mahindra wish you a spooky Christmas with psychological horror, The Dead Room. There's even more Agatha Christie, with Christie herself, sort of, investigating a murder in a new mystery starring Ruth Bradley, Pippa Hayward and Ralph Innocent. Courtney Act reveals what sort of low-key celebrations she has planned for her Christmas special. And I'll give you my top TV picks of the week, the shows which, if you miss, will make you lonelier than any home which doesn't have a KFC fried chicken scented log in the fireplace to give your living room that classy takeaway aroma. In 1926, Agatha Christie disappeared, astounding the public. Her fame was so great that an enormous hunt by police began and the Home Secretary embroiled himself in the police's progress. Today's equivalent would be like, uh, say, Joe Sugg's social media followers vanishing and not voting enough for him to win the Strictly Glitter Ball. Unthinkable. Those 11 days are the basis for new murder mystery Agatha Christie and the Truth of Murder on Channel 5 tonight at 9pm, where Christie spends those days solving a murder. Ruth Bradley, Pippa Haywood and Ralph Innocent star and they discussed this fictional case. Agatha Christie's life is fascinating. What she went on to do after this is fascinating. She kind of became even more successful and prolific after her disappearance um, and, you know, wrote all these other books and then there's all her travelling and she married an archaeologist and she was all over the world and, you know, then she wrote her Mary Westmacott novels. Like, fascinating life to mine. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, dream character. Also, something with such a strong, real woman at the helm. And it's 100 years ago. And also, it didn't feel like she was intentionally doing that, you know, in my limited amount of research that I've done, because obviously it's only the last few months, but it didn't feel like she was consciously a trailblazer. She just happened to be one by virtue of the fact that she was self-sufficient and independent and this incredible creative genius. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, I, but at the same time, had a daughter and wanted to be a mother and a wife, and she just kind of did it all. It, in my judgment, you know. I wondered, I mean, if, if you had the opportunity to play a female Poirot, mm. I mean, is that is that a role that's ripe for, for sort of gender reinvention? Absolutely, I love that idea. I love the idea of kind of gender fluidity and any character, any actor can play any part, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to, I'd so love to. Hercule Poirot. Yes! Would you still have the egg-shaped head? I would even tr grow a moustache. <laughs> I will grow a female moustache. <laughs> I read the script and thought, oh, that's great. That's a really, that's a really good, neat trick. That's a really good idea. But, uh, and then I realised that it was actually true. <laughs> I've got a really good friend of mine who's, uh, who's an Arthur Conan Doyle expert in the period. I told him about it. He goes, oh, yeah, she went missing for this. I was like, oh, right. So when you look into it, uh, yeah, it's because it's, it's a great idea anyway. You, you wonder why no one, no one has written it, even if it wasn't true. <laughs> but the fact that it is, is true, you think, well, why has no one written about this before because it's it's so Agatha Christie, it's like Agatha Christie 2.0 or whatever, isn't it? You know? <laughs> if another Christie role came along, if mm. one of the big ones came along, yeah. would you fancy would you fancy a, a, a Poirot? Would you fancy yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be very cool. Um yeah, I'd love I'd love to do uh, an Agatha Christie. Yeah. Brilliant. It was great to work in that period and yeah. An another Agatha Christie, I yeah. should say, another Agatha, yes, another Agatha Christie. Yeah, yeah. But Poirot, would you go for the fussy tash? Uh, I don't think so, really. I can't really see me as Poirot, to be honest. Um, Miss Marple? Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll probably make a bit of Miss Marple, yeah. 
any woman who is able to, to stand on their own two feet and provide the the earnings for the family in 1926 is an extraordinary human being you know I mean it, it was just a very difficult thing to do in those days wasn't it we were only just in the realms of of women having been given the vote so so to have such a, a, a um, you know, she was nationally known in her own day. It's not like we discovered her, her books 50 years later. She was really well known as such a brilliant writer in her own day. And I, I think that's absolutely thrilling. And I just love the fact that she went missing for these 11 days and then said she had amnesia. And I mean, what a wonderful, tantalizing moment of her life to leave behind in history, to, to let people wonder and ponder for all these years. It's, Happened. Now for what we call WTW, P C T Q O T every week. W. What to watch is pop culture Twitter quote of the week. What a celebrity said on Twitter huh, this week. Congrats at Stacy Dooley! Exclamation mark. Me next! Exclamation mark. J K tweeted. Professional Louis Theroux, Louis Theroux, after Dooley's Strictly win. Tease. Unless you're a Victorian miser, you have no need to fear spectral visitations this Christmas. Sorry. Unless you're a Victorian miser or Aubrey Judd, host of radio horror series The Dead Room. Mark Gatiss wrote and directed this Christmas chiller, airing on BBC4 on Christmas Eve at 10 p.m. I met him and Anjali Mahindra, who plays producer Tara, to talk about bringing the Christmas ghost story back. The problem these days is the economic model for half an hour TV is very difficult. Um, when I made the track at Middeth, it was part of a package with a documentary by M.R. James, so it's like 90 minutes of material that's kind of viable. It's hard to get those slots these days and hard to raise the money because unless you sort of make six at one, at one go, which is what I'd like to do, um, <laughs> then uh, it's a, that, that's really what it is. Whereas, you know, in the 70s, it was, it was a very recognisable format and there were lots of things in that, in, in that way. So that's really what it's about. But it's, I, the, the fact there's every Christmas there's a real, if there is one, there's such a wave of, of goodwill about it. Everyone loves them and there's obviously a need to have them. Mm. Uh, so if they... Obviously, repeat a lot of Lawrence Gordon Clark's originals and things like that, but um, I think it's just it should be a, a, an annual tradition, and I'm very happy to continue as long as they'll let me. And actually, uh, what do you make of Christmas ghost stories? Are you a fan? Is this something? This is a genre that you've always enjoyed as a viewer. Um, I have to admit that I, I watched ghost stories as a kid, and then I think I spooked myself up too much with the Amityville. <laughs> Was it called the Amityville Horror? Uh -huh. Amityville House or something? And then I just like became a little bit too afraid. Living sleep, in London sleep, as well. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when we were filming, I actually got a little list from Mark. Of start watching again. Like yes. you're just an encyclopedia of ghost knowledge. It's amazing. Try, There's so try. much out there. I didn't realise. But it's very exciting because it's, it's uh, you know, everyone asks this question, but why they go together? But they do. Christmas and ghost stories go together like orange and chocolate. <laughs> Uh, they are meant to be together <laughs> and it's a lot to do I think with an ancient storytelling tradition uh, the sort of consolidation of Dickens who sort of fixed it in people's heads and I think personally also the fact that it is also a very melancholy time of year for all its sort of surface jolliness it's a time of year we all think about people who've gone and things like that so I, I think there's a, there's a bittersweet quality to it which the ghost story suits enormously well made a veil closing, it's, it's, it's shutting down. So how privileged did you both feel to work in somewhere which had been home to so many extraordinary performances and, and now will be will be lost? Well, it's very sad. I mean, I, I, I set it there because I've been doing radio there for 20 years. And it, as long as I've been doing radio, it's always been about to close, but now it finally is, which is terribly sad. Well, it hasn't changed at all, has it? It's completely 70s, Decor. And I set it in Studio 6 and then it looked like we couldn't get it because the proms were going to be in. And then this brilliant thing happened. Uh, Isabel, the producer, uh, and the location guy were looking around and the man at the desk said, 
course, there is another studio that nobody knows about. <laughs> <laughs> Just a ghost story. Studio <laughs> Seven. <laughs> studio Seven is the same, but empty and mothballed and has a floating floor. And and then we didn't use it there because Studio Six became available. It was just fantastic. It was like, this is meant to be. Something, there's something about there's always, there's always someone sucking on the end of their glasses going. Mm. And the other thing that happened, as, as, as you told me, was that the guy at the desk gave them a number they had to call. Uh, someone will sort because they, they couldn't really get their heads around something filming in a radio studio. And then there was a number to call, and then they. Isabel rang it, and, and the phone next to the rang. <laughs> it was like, this is, yeah, this is how the BBC wow. works. Welcome back to What To Watch with me, Toby Earl. The show that aims to guide you through your week's viewing and give you a glimpse behind the scenes and hear from the stars. Coming up, I'll give you the TV picks of the week, which are almost as good as Paul Pogba's reaction on social media to Jose Mourinho's sacking, which is rapidly deleted. But first, at the start of 2018, Courtney Act stumbled into the celebrity Big Brother house exited as its champion and is closing the year with Courtney Act's Christmas extravaganza on Channel 4 at 5 past 11 on Christmas Eve. I met with her to ask what sort of unassuming night it'll be. The Judy Garland show is very much a uh, stylistic reference for us. We loved what they used to do back in the 50s, 60s. Um, with very little technology. It was like, it was a camera and it was good ideas. Mm -hmm. So whilst a lot of sort of shiny floor shows these days are LED screens and, yep. and stuff like that, we've gone for all analog. And we also like harkened back to a lot of the, um, those camera angles and those like vintage camera tricks and things and, you know, using perspective and using different things like that. So it kind of has like a, a really fresh feel, which is ironically quite a vintage feel. But you, when, you, when you were pitching all the things you wanted mm. to do, were you surprised that people just kept saying yes? Yeah, yeah, no one said no at any point. <laughs> and I don't think they should have. I'm glad they said yes. Everybody's been, it's funny because like, you, have these, you have these thoughts in your head and then you have creative meetings with the production company and then they pitch them to the network and you sort of like, oh God, they're gonna come back and say no and no, and they didn't, they just, and then I think like when we filmed it, um, you know, all of the commissioners at Channel 4 were like, Oh wow! And then we we quickly got rushed to a Christmas Eve time slot, so we must be doing something right. You do work with Leona Lewis. Yes. How are your pipes, and can you compete with Leona Lewis's pipes? No, I don't think anyone can compete with Leona Lewis's pipes. Uh, she is a goddess, and I was surprised at how uh, I have like I have PTSD left over from Australian Idol in 2003 when I just started performing in drag and was there singing in drag with like these amazing female vocalists who would like I couldn't compete with but 15 years later I've done a lot of singing lessons and now I, I now feel confident as a singer and so singing with Ligona wasn't nearly as terrifying as it possibly could have been. So it's taken 15 years to get over that the event. Australian Idol PTSD yeah um, and now I've sung with Leona Lewis and I think I am cured. <laughs> and so, is, what's the op what's the possibility of you performing on the London stage with those vocals now that you feel more confident? Is that a is with that Leona, or with anyone? Yeah, um, well, I mean, I did a tour this year around the UK in my Edinburgh Fringe show. Next year, um, we were just talking about it last night about the dates for for a, a UK tour in 2019. That's what I love, and I think like my Christmas wish. What I'm asking Santa Claus for is a 2019 Courtney Act show series and I feel like doing a live version of that as a tour would be absolutely amazing. And now for the TV news in briefs. In ancestral cribs news, the doors of Downton Abbey have been opened for the first film trailer and some dusting is required before the aristocrats and audiences will be allowed to take residence. There is positive news for the family in this brief teaser. In around a minute, 
Lady Mary has managed to not kill a man. And that was the TV news in briefs. Now, stop wondering what led to Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey sending beard clippings to rapper Azalea Banks to make an anti-ISIS amulet, because it's time for my Christmas TV picks of the week. We can all agree the trains need an overhaul and improve reliability, but not to the level found in the ABC murders, where their punctuality allows a killer to leave a trail of timetable death. On Boxing Day at 9pm on BBC One, John Malkovich assumes the role of Hercule Poirot. And I spoke to him and writer Sarah Phelps about how they realised one of Agatha Christie's iconic detectives. Well, mostly just really reading the script over and over and worked a lot with the dialect coach. Um, of course, and spoke a lot with the director about what he wanted and what his vision of it was, etc. Just the norm. I don't usually have a dialect coach, which was fantastically helpful because I speak French, but Belgian is French, but it's not considerably different, but quite different. So, a lot of work with the dialect coach, mostly. And what I also felt. You know, this, unlike some of the other maybe versions of Pajo, doesn't really call for what, what I would say is one of the pillars of English comedy, which is a funny accent. Originally, I didn't ever want to do a sleuth. I didn't ever want to do somebody who had all the answers. So when I was writing this, I had to rethink how I was going to think about this character, Hercule Poirot, right down to the fact that every time I wrote the name in the scripts, it's never as Poirot, it's always as Hercule. And so while I was writing this, I thought, well, he's going to have to be the mystery. <coughs> because I don't know him, in that case, I'm going to treat him as though he's somebody I've heard of but I've never met. And so I'm going to ask the questions that somebody like me would ask. And with the cast, do you have a list of people, British actors, you are desperate to throw into mortal danger? Because you seem to go through a... Um, no, I don't. I, I, I don't. I never have a list of actors. I never have. Because otherwise, if I did that, I'd write the actor and not the character. So we've got great casting people. It's always like I've written the scripts and then they go out to the cast and we see who's interested. After a full turkey dinner, you might think you'd be too full for a nice bit of skate. Well, you'll be proved wrong on ITV this Christmas Day at quarter past nine because of Torval and Dean, a biopic of the Olympic champions, with Poppy Lee Fryer and Will Tudor donning those unforgettable purple outfits. The pair hopped off the rink to discuss playing these sporting greats. It's a lovely thing watching it because it's almost deeper than a, a, a relationship. It's this. It goes. It almost goes beyond that because mm. not only is it is it about their personalities and and their histories and that kind of thing, but it's about them creatively as well mm. and sort of knowing what to say for the other one or not even not to say what yeah. look to well, give in, in order fact, to Jane, change them. Jane said that she said you know sometimes she uh, or Chris said Jane's no look is, is, <laughs> is um, very definite you know she'd yeah. only have to go <laughs> and he'd know exactly what she meant that's yeah. not happening kind of thing so just yeah. that kind of um, instinctive even silent instinctive, dialogue that's it, yeah. that, you know they had it's very interesting because they said when they first met, they did. It wasn't like there was this big, yeah, like, it wasn't a big spark. Spark, <laughs> but then that developed through the shared, the shared passion. But um, in terms of playing that, I think there's a lot of crossovers with acting actually, and this real such passion that it, it, it you know, makes someone very, very sort of focused on this one thing mm -hmm. and I think that's ultimately what it is and I, that's what something I really admired about him when reading the script and, and learning about him was how how important you know this was to both of them actually mm. and I, I think, think that's it, why, how they got to where they they are you know? what you're getting at with the acting I think you do have to have this kind of obsession and passion mm. with it to, to sustain it mm. and to keep going you know um, and I think that's what they both mm. had um, yeah. so that's what it was uh, 24 million people watched 
the, the, their performance. Mm. Can you begin to compute the type of pressure that they were feeling? Well, we thought about it, yeah. but we've spoken to them and they were very much mm -hmm. in their own world mm -hmm. uh, and I, yeah. didn't feel enormous pressure, uh, weren't kind of psyching the competition mm -hmm. out. Um, I asked them, yeah, I asked them about nerves and, and how they dealt with that or how they felt that and they just said, we didn't really experience that because I suppose it's, it's, it's a slightly different time in that, you know, now social media, you're very aware that the world mm. would be watching, that kind of thing. But I think they, they believed so much in what they were doing. Yeah, they had um, confidence. They had in such confidence themselves. in themselves and, and they had each other as well. So mm. in that regard, they were able to, you know, just focus on it and, and do it. And that's why they were able to, to wow us all with it. In between bouts of bat suiting, Christian Bale managed to make the flowers of war on London Live on the 27th of December at 10 p.m., which couldn't be further from the high society of Bruce Wayne. Nominated at the Golden Globes for Best Foreign Language Film, Bale plays a priest caught up in the Japanese invasion of China, a cathedral providing minimal protection from the onslaught. And that's it for this week and for this year. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll be back next year, so keep watching. But really keep watching. So I'd love to know what you thought about any of those shows. Or perhaps there's something else you've been watching that you think deserves some hoopla. Do get in touch. You can email us hello at londonlive.co.uk or tweet us, it's the future, at London Live. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll be back next year, so keep watching, and Merry Christmas.